Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Utkarsh Small Finance Bank Q4 FY24 Earnings Conference Call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participants' line will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference has been recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Renish from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Manuja. Uh, hi, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, welcome to Utkarsh Small Finance Bank Q4 FI24 and its call. On behalf of ICICI Securities, I would like to thank Utkarsh Management Team for uh, giving us the opportunity to host this call. Today we have with us the entire top management team of Utkash, uh, represented by uh, Mr. Govind Singh, Managing Director and CEO, uh, Mr. Sarji Kumar, CFO, Mr. Alok Patak, uh, CRO, uh, Mr. Tilok Nath, uh, Head Micro Banking, uh, Mr. Umesh Arora, Head Assets Retail and Wholesale Lending, uh, Mr. Sanjay Sharda, Head Consumer Banking, and Mr. Puneet Maheshwari, Head Finance. I will now hand over the call to Mr. Govindi for his opening remarks, and then we'll open the floor for uh, Q&A. Uh, over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ron and Danish. Uh, good evening to all. Uh, thank you, everyone, for taking out time to attend our Q4 FY24 earnings call. Uh, quarter 4 has been a strong quarter for us with good business growth, healthy trend in asset quality, and strong uh, profitability matrices. Uh, overall, FY24 has also been good business, uh, you know, business growth and profitability. This shows continuous strengthening of franchise and adequate growth opportunity for our business. Our loan book has grown by around 31% during FY24, in line with our expectation of 30% growth. This is despite relatively uh, slower growth in H1, FY24, on account of you know, technological ch changes introduced in micro banking business in beginning of FY24, and relatively lower pipeline for subsequent cycle loans in, in quarter 1, FY24, as it was discussed in quarter 1 and quarter 2 ordering calls. In the micro banking lending, we continue to witness healthy new customer acquisition. Uh, subsequent cycle disbursement have also been good. New technological initiatives that is uh, EKYC and eSign have stabilized. Our micro banking loan portfolio has grown by around 23% during FY24, largely in line with, you know, line with our expectation. We continue to believe that digital experience which we have brought in, uh, form, brought in the form of complete digital onboarding for loan as well as savings account uh, E-Sign, e EKYC, uh, digital collections through customer specific QR code, micro ATM, video PD, and other offerings will backbone uh, for us to build a strong and sustainable franchise with cost efficiency. Our individual loan product, MBIL, to existing mature JLG clients continues to see good traction with year-on-year uh, -year growth of uh, almost 100% with good asset quality. We see significant growth potential towards MBIL lending considering large base of our existing and matured JLG clients. We have seen healthy trend in collection efficiency and asset quality for micro banking loan portfolio. Collection efficiency improved to 97.6% for quarter 4, FY24, marginally better than our guidance of 97 to 97.5% for quarter 4, FY24. And as a result, NPH and credit costs both declined during the quarter. We saw collections coming back to normalcy as we came out of higher number of holidays period in quarter 3, uh, FY24, and strength and collection focus. Uh, from the current quarter, we are planning to introduce differential rate of interest for our JLG customers. It is asset quality, vintage costs, etc., which will help us in implement risk-based pricing in micro banking lending uh, more effectively. We have seen steady growth across our uh, secured retail lending portfolio, uh, MSME, housing, and CCV. Uh, we have dispersed close to 100 crore across these three products in uh, quarter 4 FY24, almost 50% higher than quarter 3 FY24 disbursement for the three products put together. On asset quality of retail uh, loan book, we have strengthened our collections team by adding more man manpower as well as separate team for bucket-wise and vertical-wise collection. We have also implemented EBITS collection application for better tracking of our collection efforts. These are yielding good results. Uh, furthermore, wholesale lending book remains tightly controlled. We had nil NPH in wholesale lending. Our overall gross NPH declined by 50 basis points during uh, quarter 4. Uh, FY24 to 2.51% from 3.04% as on December 23. 
on gross advances including ibpc book gross uh, nps was 2.3% as on march 24 overall credit costs declined to uh, almost 1.7% for quarter 4 fy24 well within our guidance a guided range of around 2% Overall credit cost for full FY24 at 2.2 percent was little higher than our guided range of around 2 percent. But was uh, but we are confident that we will be able to reduce credit cost to our original guide, guided range of around 2 percent in FY25. Nevertheless, credit cost for FY24 included additional floating provision of around 56 crore, excluding this excluding this credit cost was. Uh, around 8.8 for what sorry around 1.8 percent for FY24. We will continue to build floating provision further in FY25 to strengthen our ability to withstand any unforeseen event impact uh, better. On the liability side, our deposit growth is led by retail term deposit as we continue to focus on strengthening the deposit profile through broad basing of depositors. Our report retail term deposit uh, uh, grew by 42.9 percent year on year. While bulk bulk term deposits grew by only 12.3% uh, year on year, we experienced relatively tighter environment for CASA deposits growth and CASA percentage on account of elevated interest rate environment, which kept depositors' presence preference towards term deposits. Our CASA ratio was 20.5% as on March 31, uh, 2024. We will work to strengthen our CASA deposit growth and CASA percentage significantly over FY25. We have been able to diversify our funding profile through tapping lower cost IBPC borrowings as well as uh, refinance borrowings at competitive rates. Uh, we are maintaining comfortable liquidity position with surplus liquidity of around 2,500 crore at the end of March 24 and LCR ratio of 166 percent. Our CD ratio declined to 93.7 percent as on March 31. 2024 and we net off uh, you know and we we net off uh, refinance borrowings from advances cd ratio declines to 84.3% we don't have any short term borrowings on our balance sheet while on overall basis liquidity and interest rate environment remains tight we expect deposit growth to be that higher than loan book growth for fy25 which would also help us moderating cd ratio further in fy25 We continue to build our banking franchise and open eight new branches in quarter four FY24 and 15 branches during FY24, taking total branch network to 8,888 branches. We also uh, implemented new, uh, you know, lead management system LEMS, which also which will help us in cross sell as well as improve new sourcing across products. We are also undertaking a technology and business transformation project to strengthen our technology architecture to make it future growth ready. We believe there are significant growth opportunities available in our core geographies, given the good growth potential and relatively lower financial penetration. We'll continue to strengthen our franchise and presence, and explore significant growth potential through our relevant and suitable product offerings. We have been constructive about passing on increase in cost of funds, and as a result, we maintain our net interest margin well, uh, which improved to 9.9 percent in quarter four FY24. Furthermore, we have uh, reduced credit costs, including floating provision, to 1.1.7 percent, uh, well within our guidance of 2 percent. Overall, we had healthy financial performance, as reflected in our highest ever annual operating profit pre-provisions of 99, 997 crore and PAT of 498 crore for FY24. Our ROA and ROE was 2.4 percent and 19.5 percent, respectively, during FY24. We will continue to build our own strategies of creating stronger franchise for our micro banking business, as well as for MSME lending, housing loans, and wheels lending, and more granular liability franchise. We will continue to build floating provision further in FY25 to strengthen our ability to withstand any unforeseen event impact better. We will strengthen our positioning, franchise, and product further in FY25. And years to come to build stronger banking platform. Our guidance for some key uh, key numbers for FY24-25 uh, are as follows: uh, We expect a gross loan book growth of uh, around 30 percent, deposit growth to be higher by at least three to five percent uh, with this loan loan growth. Uh, so we uh, and with a with a target to reduce CD ratio further in FY25. Focus on maintaining strong asset quality with nil net NPS and credit cost at around two percent. Credit cost guidance is including additional floating provision, which bank will build in FY25. On profitability, returns on assets, return on assets of uh, more than 2%, and return on capital on equity of more than 18%, and 
and cost income ratio in the range of 54 to 57 percent. Now I'll hand over call to Sarju, our uh, CFO, for taking you through financial performance for the quarter. Thank you, Govindji, and uh, good evening, friends. Uh, actually, uh, this early call is the first call where we are going to talk about the full year performance. And uh, of course, we have been speaking with you uh, even prior to IPO during the road shows, uh, telling about uh, company story and trajectory of growth. And we also spoke, uh, spoke with you during the September and December quarter results. Let me reflect, uh, you know, uh, on the real year and uh, re 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 recollect the conversation that we have had. Uh, the bank's yield on uh, loan advances has been 19% uh, uh, through and through, in spite of the mix having changed. We ended Q4 with a yield loan advances of 19.46%, and for the full year, our yield continued to remain at 19%. On lean, with the reason of our good business model, we have seen that our lean has been upward 9%. We ended lean of 9.86% for Q4, and for the full financial year, our lean was 9.44%. We have been talking about our cost income ratio to be in the range of 54 to 57%. We ended Q4 with our cost income ratio at 57%, and for the full year, our cost income ratio was 56.38%, and our ROA has been upward 2%, and this conversation, as I said, we have been having through and through for last six to eight quarters before IPO and during the subsequent IPO calls that we have had, has been uh, ended Q4 ended at 2.91%, and for the full year, our ROA is 2.45%. ROE has, has, has been, uh, you know, said that to be 18% with a high raised larger capital to which we raised to, which we raised to IPO. Our Q4 ROE has been 22.26%, and for the full year, our ROE has been 19.54%. Now, let me quickly go to the results per se and put numbers uh, to what Goenji just uh, spoke about. Uh, for, uh, for the March, 31st financial end that we have reported a gross loan portfolio of 18,299 crores against 16,407 crores on the immediate previous quarter, which is a quarter on quarter uh, range of 11.5%. And if I were to compare with uh, gross loan portfolio, TBS year end at 13,957, our gross loan portfolio, which is at 18,299 crore, is registered in a growth of 31%. Uh, the total deposit we clocked a year end was 17,473 crores against 15,111 crores, a quarter on quarter rise of 15.6%. And on a year on year basis, we were at 13,710 crores. Today, at 17,473 crore deposit, we have registered a YOI growth of 27.4%. Largely, the composition of deposit has been growth in retail term deposit, exceeding 42%. Uh, year on year uh, from 23 March to 24 March. Now coming to the PNL, uh, we have registered and rise in interest income. Our interest income for the quarter was 540 crores against uh, previous quarter, previous year corresponding quarter a rise of 32%. And on year on year basis, the net interest income was 1,886 crores against 1,529 crores, a YOI rise of net interest income by 23%. Uh, our total uh, uh, operating income was 661 crore for the current quarter compared to previous year uh, corresponding quarter FY23 at 479 crore. Uh, operating income has gone up by 38% quarter on quarter. And if I take the full year operating profit, we have done an operating profit of 2,286 crore against 1,828 crore, a growth in operating income by 25%. If you look at our operating profit, we had 282 crores for the current quarter and uh, 208 crores immediately previous year quarter, Q4 FY23, a registered in growth of operating profit of by 35%. And for the full year, our operating profit is at 997 crores uh, against 838 crores uh, for the previous full financial year and 19% growth in operating profit in fact. Uh, both uh, operating profit, and I'm just going to talk about that, has been highest uh, 
in in couple of years of history of uh, Utkarsh. Our patch for the quarter was 160 crore against 134 crores immediately previous quarter, a rise of 19%. And for the full year, we ended a reported pet of 498 crores against 405 crores, a growth of 23% YOY. Uh, just a few more, you know, uh, matter to say, like we continue to uh, create floating provision and uh, the number of floating provision that has gone into the financial year 23-24 is 56 crore, which was at 1.5% of, uh, of my JLG book. Uh, we intend to continue this uh, provision uh, and reach it up to 2% this year on the closing uh, uh, portfolio of JLG book. I think this uh, obviously is uh, with an expectation to strengthen the balance sheet and make uh, provision for any unforeseen circumstances. And we have spoken before that this floating provision is a straight line accrual in accounts month on month and quarter on quarter. And this floating provision is used only in eventuality uh, of some unforeseen circumstances. And, and, and that uh, provision we generally would want to make at times when, when profits are, are, are available and the business model is, is giving good returns. So we continue to work on, on making certain provision on a prudency basis. Uh, I think credit costs, though, which you mentioned, uh, at 1.75% in Q4 uh, with collection and efficiency and better, collect, better collection from write-offs, uh, credit cost is at 2.2, but the trending uh, at the Q4 beginning at 1.7, we are we, we, we are hoping to to keep that around 2%. Uh, my the asset side, quality side, uh, gross NPA is 3.2.51 again 3.23 it has improved, and my net net NPA is almost 0.03% inching to the three digit zero figure very soon again 0.39%. I think I, I, I want to say that this year's strong financial performance for the quarter and for the full year is largely in line with our expectations. We look forward to uh, answer your questions and queries and think about it. While I just spoke about year and year, I think Govindji has already spoken about the wider windshield and opportunities that we have, and he's already given the guidance on some of the KPIs. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a movement while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Rajiv Mehta from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening. Uh, congratulations on very strong performance. Uh, so I have two questions. Firstly, on uh, the strong growth in disbursement of uh, micro banking JLG, uh, can you split uh, this growth between volume and ticket price? And what was the average disbursement ticket price in Q4? Uh, okay, I think I'll just pass on to the globe, but I want to make one man one mention that our ticket size has not gone up in quarter four. In fact, it has not gone up at all in the quarter, in the entire year also. So the entire growth is on account of uh, more number of new customers and disbursement of subsequent customers. But Pidlo can uh, speak a little more about this part. Uh, so uh, our ticket size has uh, uh, not gone up as uh, in said, uh, but uh, uh, new client acquisition. Uh, it was almost 50% uh, 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 in S2, 50% uh, of our entire disbursement. So uh, basically we uh, produce the growth on that side and uh, then uh, we have the subsequent cycle disbursement in geographies like uh, uh, Urisa, Rajasthan, Jharkhand, and uh, of course in UP and Bihar. Uh, so uh, we have not uh, disbursed, uh, means uh, uh, for last two years we have uh, 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 problem with the COVID, so we have uh, not disbursed too many uh, clients, uh, neither on subsequent cycle or on uh, uh, fresh uh, center or fresh clients. 
So uh, basically, uh, this growth came uh, from uh, this toxicant cycle disbursement and uh, uh, this uh, new client acquisition. Also, we and had uh, clients at the existing centers. Uh, means it's not only opening up the new centers, uh, going to the new villages or new uh, Bhakti Mohalla, but uh, also adding clients at the existing center. So that uh, that has driven the growth basically. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, so that means, uh, uh, has there been any change in customer retention rates in uh, uh, the main markets of Bihar and UP, uh, uh, which can uh, maybe due to increase in competition or leverage of the borrower, or it remains the same? So there are two aspects you mentioned that one is that we have got more and more new customers now. You know, uh, post COVID, there are there's that growth of slow in terms of adding new customers. That is one part. And second, uh, we had told in the previous earning calls also we had some challenge because of the COVID, you know, you can see the next one, one, one and a half year time, we had very limited number of subsequent customers because we are not adding customers 22 and 23. So in the H1, we had very limited number of subsequent cycle customers. So in the H2, you can say both, both have happened better. Uh, we could uh, acquire more and more new customers as well as our subsequent cycle, uh, the, the base, you know, uh, base uh, number of customers was much higher for this uh, uh, this period. I think maybe Kuni, they have an exact number also. Yeah, yeah, Rani, so if you just <coughs> look at uh, the JLG growth, which is about 20% for full financial year. Our average ticket size between March 23 to March 24 has gone up by about 4%. And balance 16% growth has come on account of new customer acquisition. And dropout has been largely same between quarter 2, quarter 3, quarter 4. So there is no material change in the dropout ratio. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, you know, significant improvement in collection efficiency in micro banking, uh, 98 uh, versus 96. Uh, so one is, uh, I mean, uh, last quarter with this factor of uh, more more holiday. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, can we, uh, so from a sustainability perspective, uh, can the current uh, collection efficiency uh, of 98 percent uh, and thereabouts uh, sustain uh, in the coming quarters as well? Uh, so, uh, uh, we have tried to create uh, a structure around collections uh, because uh, uh, in Q3 we have uh, 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 too many slippers uh, due to holiday, as you said. Uh, then we have tried to create uh, a structure around collections and we try to uh, follow up from uh, head office level, from the journal offices and uh, regional offices, uh, the collection in each bucket. So uh, uh, this slippers was there, but uh, sometimes uh, when uh, when is done, uh, sometimes we follow only uh, 90 DPD or 88, 89 DPD. Uh, so instead of that, we uh, we kept following on each bucket. So 1 to 30, 31 to 60, 61 to 90. Uh, so that helped us a lot. Again, uh, we have uh, this, uh, we have driven this uh, uh, collections of uh, return of uh, accounts. So there also we have uh, uh, good success. Uh, in quarter uh, in quarter four especially, uh, so all these uh, uh, efforts put together, uh, this improved the collection efficiency, and uh, uh, we hope that uh, it will continue uh, because uh, uh, now structure is in place, so uh, it will definitely continue what we experience in this uh, quarter four. Mm, got it. Then one last question on uh, uh, you know on, on the deposit side. Uh, what is the current cost of uh, uh, retail term deposit? And what is the incremental cost? And what is the maturity profile? Okay, so uh, cost we have uh, given on the presentation as well. So from our term deposit perspective, uh, the average cost is about 8.5, 8.6% for that. And uh, if you see highest rate, what we are offering is 8.5% for a regular customer and 9.1% for senior citizen. So that's how we are placed. Tenor, I just said one percent so in terms of tenders also we are seeing uh, incrementally more longer tenor deposit coming in. So now in terms of break of if I just tell you, so right now our uh, deposits which are two years plus are about, about 12-13% of our uh, total deposits, which earlier actually was much lower percentage. So you see, uh, it, it also a function of uh, the rate of interest, I mean, in terms of which bucket is the highest rate of interest. Now, if you see uh, the highest rate is between two to three year bucket, and I mean, that is the bucket we are seeing uh, a sizable bit of Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, investor. Thank you. Yeah.
Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Ritesh Bam from DM Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening, sir. So, two questions. Uh, one is if you have uh, mentioned anything uh, about margins, they have been a little bit uh, higher. Is there any uh, interest reversal or interest booking because of recovery and all? Uh, can you quantify if there is any? So, I mean, it's not much. I mean, only impact from our net interest margin perspective is the lower fresh slippages versus what was the case, let's say, in quarter three. So, in quarter three, we had fresh slippages of 135 crores. And this quarter, we had less than 100 crores. So, that is the only uh, additional impact from an NPA perspective. Otherwise, the net interest margin is also positively impacted by the repricing of the microfinance loan book, which we had highlighted last time. So, that is also, uh, in a way, uh, supporting net interest margin. So, can you give how much is the disbursement uh, yield, uh, the uh, outstanding yield on the microfinance book as well? So, microfinance uh, disbursement yield is 25% and a portfolio basis yield is 24% now for the quarter fall. And how much would, would have that changed in uh, uh, last uh, six months? Yes, so, in quarter 3, we were close to 23 and a half. In quarter 2, we were at 23%. And before that, in quarter 1, we were at 22.7%. So, it has been increasing by 30 to 50 basis points quarter on quarter. One, obviously, it's the benefit of, I mean, this quarter is both benefit. One is lower the EPAs and uh, the fact that uh, repricing is also happening. Got it. Uh, second question was on OPEX. Uh, looks like a little bunching up in this quarter. Uh, what is the trend uh, going to be for, uh, going ahead? And anything to look into this quarter? And what what will be our cost to income thought process basically? So uh, cost to income going to ahead uh, initially also talked about. So cost to income we think would remain in a range of 54 to 57 percent for us. Uh, on an incremental basis. And uh, quarter on quarter, uh, you know, at times expenses are also, let's say, based on the activity level. So as business activity or like some other ground level activity picks up, quarter on quarter expenses may be really higher than certain uh, quarters depending on the activity level. And that is what we have seen in this quarter. And overall basis, we expect cost income ratio to be in a range of 54 57%. Great. Congrats on the great number. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Aman Gupta from Ocul Capital Growth Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, yes. So my question was on the uh, merger, uh, the uh, and what what like what 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 is the timeline we are expecting? So if you remember that we had discussed earlier also in the previous call and uh, now we have got a formal approval from both the boards that we should go ahead with the pro process and we have initiated the process you know, getting the people and um, when I say consultants and those who will help us in, in the whole process and uh, so that process has already come in. Uh, it's very difficult to you know pinpoint the overall time taken but we have seen in other cases also takes around 12 to 15 months time and we expect it should be in this in, the, in, the, in terms of timeline should be in the similar range maybe around 12 to 15 months from now, uh, we should be able to complete the whole process. And also, uh, what could we expect about the reverse ratio? Like, because I'm asking, will it be given at a discounted rate or a premium rate? No, it's too early to talk about that. You know, we, it is, uh, we have not discussed also. So maybe as and when, you know, if this discussion happens and it is closed, I will certainly come back to you. But it is not yet discussed also, you know, as of now. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Ashlesh Sonjay from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Hi team, good evening. Uh, congratulations on the strong numbers for the quarter. I have a few questions. Firstly, on the uh, recovery, recovery income from the uh, from return of assets, that was very strong this quarter. Uh, what is the outlook for that going forward, given that we have also written off quite a, uh, some 90-odd crores in the fourth quarter? 
So our assessment is that you know, uh, uh, obviously we have seen uh, very strong in case of quarter four, but on a on a regular basis when you look at, we expect that uh, you know uh, maybe around six seven crore on an average uh, on a monthly basis. That is the trajectory we are expecting this year. So overall, maybe in the range of say 65 to 80 crore is what we expect. Overall write off uh, collections will happen. Uh, again, as I mentioned, it's an indicative of its guidance from our side. That is what we expect. Okay. Um, and secondly, on the cost of fund side, uh, that has gone up by only 10 odd basis points for the quarter. Um, what is what is the outlook on that? Would you say that the repricing on the deposits is largely complete now? So as far as repricing is concerned, it's almost complete, maybe around 10-12% of deposits uh, where the repricing is yet to happen. So from from now, as you may, I mean, we can say from system angles, the rates are not going up. Obviously, there are uh, you can say liquidity crunch, and you must have seen our we have very strong liquidity base right now. Uh, you know, almost 2,500 crore at the end of March. So our perspective, maybe you know, it can go up at the most, maybe 10 to 15 basis points, not more than that. And during this financial year, uh, if market is you know remains the same level where it is today, it might go up around 10 to 15 basis points, and uh, not beyond that. Okay. Um... Sir, on the OPEX front, uh, it has been a bit higher in this quarter, both on the staff side as well as non-staff side. Uh, what is leading to it? Is it also related to the um, higher amount of focus that we have on connections uh, starting this quarter? You know, on a, on a salary, uh, we can say it is both I and mean, largely a variable cost component. Which has uh, driven, which is both. I mean, uh, you you drive, let's say, uh, income collection efforts, and it is also a little bit. I mean, it's a variable component largely. And on other operating expenses, as I said, if you see specifically, if you see last uh, three quarters, I mean, between quarter two to quarter three, our office was largely the same. This is also dependent on the activity level. So some of the expenses, like like say uh, repair and maintenance, printing, postage and courier, etc., were a little higher in this quarter. Some bit of uh, the legal and professional expenses, etc., were a little higher in this quarter. So essentially, uh, let's say from a quarterly trend perspective, what we can say is if you, uh, I mean, the, it is largely depending on let's say the activity level, both the business level activity as well as the ground level activity at times. And from an overall outlook perspective, we can say uh, from an OPEX cost metric perspective, whether it is OPEX by uh, APA or cost to income ratio, we will be largely in a range in financial year 25, uh, and where we have been in financial year 24. Thanks. Just one last data keeping question. Uh, can you give up a, give a breakup of the usages for the quarter across segments? And specifically for the microfinance segment, can you give me a give me the give me the slippage for the past few quarters? Yeah, so for this quarter we had a total fresh NPA generation of ninety three crore, of which micro banking is sixty five crore, MSME is eleven crore, uh, CBNC is twelve crore, housing is four crore. And others are two crore. And for last few quarters, micro banking in quarter three was ninety eight. Before that, it was 75, and before that, it was 71 crore in quarter one. Okay, perfect. Thanks a lot, Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Renish from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, just uh, two questions from my side uh, on the uh, uh, non uh, M5 book. Uh, so when we look at the MSME lending book, uh, you know, there has been a sharp uh, jump in the disbursement during Q4. Uh, so when we look at uh, last four quarters, uh, the disbursement has been uh, ranged down around uh, 300 to 350 odd crore, but that has suddenly gone up to some 550 odd crore in Q4. Uh, so what is leading to that? I mean, it is just because we might be expanding our distribution network or uh, is there something else to read into it? So I mean, it's a combination of few factors. One is you mentioned, you know, uh, expanding the distribution network because we have, wherever we have general banking branches, sometimes even the micro banking branches, we expand our MSME, housing and bills uh, network. So that is one part for sure. Second, I think during last few years, you know, we have been able to have a stable uh, team also because it normally takes around two to three years time to reach that level. So at least in MSME, we can say that we have a stable team now. And the trajectory what you've seen in the, uh, in the last year, that will continue next year also, that is for sure, you know, uh, from the MSME. Not only in MSME, but even the other products also, MSME or wheels and 
and uh, and housing and uh, retail lab also. So the trajectory will will, will continue. Uh, one factor suddenly happens that you know quarter four, I think you know there is a there is a greater um, you know activity level that goes up. So around 10 to 15 percent increase because of that also happens uh, for sure. But overall trajectory for next year will remain in the same range. I'm talking about growth trajectory will remain in the same range. What we have seen in FY24. Got it. And uh, sir, related question to this uh, on the yield side as well. So when we look at uh, a year back uh, in Q4 last year, our yield was from 11%, uh, which went up to almost 11.8 in Q3, and which sort of moderated uh, by 40 basis point in Q4. Uh, so, uh, so this is, uh, uh, let's say, a general interest rate movement, or uh, uh, let's say we have changed our segment, target segment from a high ticket to low low ticket or uh, or anything like that i mean is there something to read uh, into the uh, disbursement yield movement yeah certainly i think when you talk about disbursement yield movement we are you know focusing more and more on the you can say lower end of uh, msme uh, our focus area is, i mean i'm not saying we don't do transactions of uh, crore plus but it is more focus on the 25 to 50 lakh type of bracket where we can do a lot of work in our uh, some of our core geographies as well as the yields are better I mean, we might have done some more transactions and the competition also, you know, is, gets intensified in uh, quarter four. That's why a little lower each in quarter four. But whatever, you know, we just uh, saw the trajectory in, of yield in till quarter quarter three, uh, maybe around 30 to 40 basis point higher uh, yield uh, for FY25. That is what we can guide in today. Got it, got it. And I mean, secondly, uh, on the housing loan side, you know, so when we look at the uh, every ticket size uh, at around 2025, you know, suddenly uh, not the segment where uh, most of the affordable housing finance uh, guys are operating, uh, you know, those guys are at around uh, a million odd. Uh, so here, uh, who are our competition in this segment? I mean, uh, do we compete with the banks and hence uh, the rates are at, uh, let's say, 10 and a half versus uh, 13, 14 percent for the uh, peer and VFCs? I mean, how one should look at this segment? What is the strategy? Hi. Yeah, so as you rightly said, okay, our ticket size is ranging between like okay, 20 to 25 lakh rupees. Here our competitors is our peer banks, other small finance banks, and some big like okay, NBFCs. So here we want to see that okay, the quality of the portfolio, uh, as at the same time we are able to garner like okay, 1 1.5% higher rate of interest from the universal bank. So we, as you know, that okay, our presence is into tier 2 and tier 3 and uh, specifically in UP and Bihar and we want to leverage that like, okay, our, our footprint in those locations and uh, thus like, okay, we are able to uh, gather higher rate of interest. Uh, Renny, I want to add one thing on this part. So, you know, the moment you go from 25, 30 lakh to say 10 to 15 lakh, I think the team is, you know, is not aligned to that. That is our experience. You know, the same guy doesn't do that part. No, to, to, you can say to take care of that part, what we are doing, I, I think we mentioned in our last earning call also, MicroLife is one product which we, into, we intend to focus upon. We have already got a team and obviously we expect some good traction during this year. It takes a little time to, you know, complete, you know, make the team and, uh, you know, uh, generate volumes from there. So that is one part and we will also be considering, you know, rural housing type of things. But for that we require a separate team. So there the yields will also be better and ticket size will certainly, you know, maybe in the range of 7 to 12 lakh type of things. So for that we need to create a separate, and especially in our core geography, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Dharakhand in that area, uh, the, the opportunity is, is, is quite high. So our idea is that FY25 should see some good uh, traction in this and maybe uh, some better yields also because of that. Got it, got it. No, so just wanted to understand that, uh, you know, in housing uh, loan segment, uh, we will continue to operate in this 20 to 25 lakh rupees uh, ticket size or uh, we intend to uh, get into the rural housing loan wherein ticket size will be done at like, I mean, uh, what's the strategy uh, in FI25? So in short term, we will continue with this segment as well as, you know, build our micro lab and rural housing both. And maybe after after down the line, you know, year, one, one and a half year down the line, we can review that whether we, you know, what makes you know sense in long term for us or not. Today we intend to certainly you know build this portfolio as well as create uh, two new segments where the yields will be much much higher, but the segments are different and the teams are also getting created you know separately for that purpose. So we have already started investing uh, to build a rural housing. 
Uh, we have already started for micro lab for sure. We have around uh, 50 odd people team is already in field and they have started you know, getting trained and product has been launched and uh, uh, some sourcing has already started in the beginning. So that has already been done. And rural housing will see next two to three months time that will also get launched in the, by end of quarter one or maybe beginning of quarter two. Got it. And just the last clarification. So uh, when it comes to the non-MFI uh, book, uh, it is right to assume that uh, broadly we'll start with our uh, core geographies, which is UK and BR, and then uh, maybe after uh, stabilizing process, uh, you know, a bit of handle on asset quality, etc., then we'll type the other geography? Yeah, yes, yes. That remains the thought process always. And in this case also, we'll start with our core geography only. Okay, okay. Uh, that is from my side. Uh, best of luck, sir. Thanks, Dennis. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Next question is from the line of Shailesh Kanani from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so a couple of questions from my side. But sir, can you give, give some color on in terms of AUM uh, breakup for the next year, where you said that 30% growth would be early uh, How would that uh, mix look like? And what does the management think of uh, corporate loan or 10 or 11 percent wholesale funding what we do? So how, what is our view on that? So maybe I'll ask we need to give the you know the breakup for next year, but broadly speaking our thought process is uh, we have done corporate lending, but these, the corporate lending are not the way universal bank does. Our ticket size will be you know 10 to 30 crore, you know, largely average around 15, 17. When we do NBFC and SAC type of uh, books, so uh, our idea is not to not to grow that book. Uh, wherever we are, there may be you know three, four, five percent growth, not more than that. That is what even internal plans and even the board guidance is on those lines that you be there, but don't try to grow this fast. So that is one part of the NBFC space. On the, the other book is what we call the you know business banking group, BBG group, where we try to give uh, uh, largely working capital or sometimes dumb loans also to smaller entities. That's a technically SME space for us, where we normally do around 3 to 10 crore type of segment and average will be around 4 to 5 crore for us. And uh, till, till date, all the, uh, you know, plus, all the cases are 100% plus uh, hard collateral, you know, the loans we have given. So that segment we certainly intend to grow because that segment comes with all other, uh, you know, you can say businesses also to us. Normally we will be preferred banker for them or sometimes even sole banker for us. Not in all cases, but in most of the cases. Uh, so uh, that is the segment what we intend to grow. We have grown well. I mean, we are around 500 crore plus right now. And our idea is to, you know, grow by around 40 to 50 percent. Uh, that segment uh, for next year. And that will be on a long term basis, you know, uh, because the customer will be with us. I think that's the way we, you know, mentioned that growing together type of thing. So that is what is happening in case of BBG. Uh, but I'm just asking any to From a portfolio composition perspective, if you see micro banking as in March 23 was 66 percent for us, which has come down to 62 percent, 4 percent in terms of share. This is our expectation for financial year 25 as well. So maybe share of micro banking will come down by 3 to 5 percent, anywhere between 57 to 59 percent for financial year 25. And uh, businesses, I mean, in terms of, let's say, MSME, when we talked about micro lab, uh, housing and wheels are the businesses which will increase in terms of size. Wholesale lending, which is at about 10 percent now, would remain at about 10, 11 percent in terms of portfolio composition. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Uh, so a couple of more questions. Uh, one is on non-interest income. Uh, this quarter we have seen a very good jump in that. So uh, uh, what is on the sustainable basis? Uh, how, how can we see that non-interest income? Because the fourth quarter was excellent. Uh, so can you throw some color on that? So uh, non-interest income, uh, obviously we had uh, seen a good right of collection in this quarter. As Govinda had said, uh, right of collection obviously, uh, let's say, may not get uh, repeat, let's say, each quarter, something like that. But at the same time, if you see the PSLC income was much lower in quarter four. It was only about 7 crore. For the full year, we have booked PSLC income of more than 100 crore. So on an overall basis, we think the non-interest income would remain, uh, let's say, largely at a similar level in terms of ROI matrix, or the marginal lower depending on PSLC uh, demand supply dynamics and the right of collection level. But otherwise, overall other income should remain strong. I mean, uh, other streams like, let's say, either the, the sale of third-party products and the transition income, etc., etc., should remain healthy and should increase as we are uh, penetrating our language in the better. Okay, 
सर लास्ट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम माय साइड ऑन ऑन क्रेडिट कॉस्ट आर वी सीइंग सो ऑब्वियसली फोर्थ क्वार्टर हैज बीन एक्सीलेंट फॉर आज इन टर्म्स ऑफ कलेक्शन एफिशिएंसी बट ओवरऑल ऑन द एमएफआई बुक आर देयर एनी पेन पॉइंट्स और प्रेशर इन जनरल वी आर सीइंग और हाउ आर वी सीइंग एफआई 25 इन दैट केस फॉर अस so generally you know i think we have we have not seen any specific uh, issue you know at a larger level but sometimes we do face you know some local issues you know some some of the geography some of the branches and that keeps happening and as a you know mfi player we have been handling those in past also so there nothing which you know which is very specific uh, to us uh, and uh, as uh, we mentioned earlier also our trajectory for crypto collections which was in the range of 97.6% or so uh, we expect that this will remain uh, i mean here or maybe a little better in 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 fy25 uh, we don't have any specific you know issue in any of the places but there might be sometimes you know some of the unit level issue or some branch level issue uh, do crop in but not not otherwise so no want to add something on this yeah so we don't have any specific area but we have few districts in few states like uh, in uh, there to the uh district in jharkhand there are four five districts in up again uh, two three districts in uh, uh, haryana Uh, otherwise uh, we don't have any specific uh, geography where we are facing any uh, such problem uh, which can affect our uh, credit cash okay sir thanks a lot and congratulations once again sure thank you thank you very much the next question is from the line of sarvesh mutha from antic stock broking please go ahead uh good evening sir uh congratulations on a great set of numbers and uh, uh my my question would be on margin so somewhere like that uh, uh the steady state margin should be around somewhere between 9.2 to 9.3 and plus minus 10 basis points now we exited at uh, 9.7 uh, 9.9 so uh, where do you see margins going forward and how much i mean how much of these margins are uh, getting i mean are, are led by the jlg repricing how much of that has been done so margins are you know combination of multiple factors as you um, you are aware and uh, it was certainly much better in case of quarter four but uh, the way we discussed in the last earning call also if you look at the medium term scenario uh, we mentioned the next 2 to 3 years horizon i think margins earning will always be above 9% that is what we have given guidance earlier also and that remains uh, you know today also yeah obviously uh, 9.9 will not be sustainable but if you look at next year maybe 9.4 or 9.35 type of uh, margins are certainly there and uh, in medium term it will be always be 9% plus uh, a medium when i say 2 to 3 years time any specific point you want to add uh, from no from a repricing perspective i just want to highlight right now i mean taking as on march 24 there is about 20% book which is yet to be repriced fully but at the same time govind sir had talked about the differential rate of interest uh, which we plan to implement so our thought process is that these two would offset each other incrementally for financial year 25 and hence from a from a micro finance yield perspective we would remain where we are uh, in quarter four and and this differential rate uh, how much of the, uh, how much of difference would that be so that is what i said uh, roughly uh, you know our sense is that on account this repricing uh, we would have uh, gained additional 20 25 basis point and we think probably this will be uh, let's say the decline in yield on account this differential rate of interest and broadly these two would offset each other in the financial year no like uh, so your current disbursement on mfi would be around 25% and uh, if if you plan to do a uh, differential disbursement yield so how much of a difference would that be in the yield so what we are planning i mean we are still assessing but our sense is that we would be going let's say 1 to 2% lower than our guard rate for selling better quality customers better vintage customers and so on okay okay and and also on uh, on on cd ratio you have said that uh, Uh, you plan to get it down further so any any broad range that you intend to get it down to so i think in uh, last earning call also mentioned that on a year on year basis uh, you know we expect around 3 3.5% uh, decline in the cd ratio for next 2 to 3 years time till we reach the 85% and below and uh, that trajectory you know for fy25 uh, will will continue okay sir okay that that would be all congratulations once again thank you thank you thank you very much 
Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Vinay Nadkarni from Hatfay Investment Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, this one, uh, I have just two questions. One is uh, the CD ratio last year was, you gave two numbers. One was uh, for the year as a whole, uh, 93 and then 84. Uh, what was the 93 number? So 93 is our CD ratio, which is coming like from the face of the balance sheet. And 84% is because we have refinanced borrowing from our balance sheet. When we reduce refinance borrowing okay. from our loan, you know, because yeah. those borrowings are taken to refinance the bond. And if then if we calculate our CD ratio, it is 84%. Okay. And uh, lastly, on the number of branches that you expect to open in FY25? So this year we have a plan for opening around 150 odd branches. I mean the number could be plus minus, you know, by 10 based on you know getting property, getting property in time, and those type of things. But around 150 odd branches we expect this year. Out of that uh, general bank banking branches, around 60 odd will be general banking branches, and next 90 plus will be our micro banking branches uh, across the country. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. That's all for me. As there are no further questions, I will now like to hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Just one uh, more clarification. I mean, on data point with respect to the deposit channel, which we had uh, shared. So I meant basically that the deposit more than three year category is about 11%. Uh, two to three year is about 20%, less than one year is about 6%, and balance is largely in one to two year bucket. And we also clarified on the ticket size of budget plan. It yeah. has gone up by 4% during last year, and uh, the rest is... The rest of the process is on account of new customers. New customers. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for coming you know, and joining this call, and uh, you have been always supporting us, and we look forward to continued support. I think uh, you must. You have seen the results. Uh, last two points which were not discussed. I just want to uh, highlight two points. One is that we we have started dividend, you know, paying dividend from this year. So we'll become a dividend paying company, and that is what is a small beginning from our side. And second, I want to re-emphasize on the floating provision. Uh, this year, the board has directed us or guided us to make you know two percent floating provision on our JLG book. And the way we had told in past, also we intend to create a sizable floating provision so that you know uh, any 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 issue we can we are able to withstand so and uh, the way we have guided also you know 30 percent growth in uh, plus growth in the uh, overall assets and uh, overall advances and three to five percent higher growth for deposits for this year that is what we are aiming at and other other, other some of the ratios like roa of two percent plus and roe of 18 percent plus and cost income in the range of 54 to 57 percent and NIM being uh, above 9% um, in, in the medium term, not for this year alone, but for the medium term. Here are some of the guidance you know, from the management, from the board uh, discussion. So again, thank you very much for joining this call and look forward to your continued support. Thank you. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. <laughs>